I am Anand Pereira from Sapphire Kingdom Gemology YouTube channel. This is my lesson number seven. In this lesson, we are discussing pleochroism of sapphire and thus accurate gem cutting. How to cut gemstones to get the maximum luster and the beauty of the stone. That is the lesson. Please subscribe and give a like and share. Now we are we are getting into the lesson now. Look at this. This is the rough stone. When the light rays come here, it is reflecting. This is reflecting ray. This is coming ray, entering ray. It will reflect. We can't see the correct color of the stone. Now look at here. This is the cut and polished stone. This entering ray goes through the stone and reflected from this pavilion facets and comes to here, this pavilion facets, and it is reflecting through the table of the stone. Then this entering ray is getting mixing with the color inside the stone and it reflects the gemstones inner color and the beauty so we can see the beauty of the stone with this cut and polished gemstone but here nothing so this is the main thing difference between these two these two stones so when we cut and polish the stone's value is increased. So this is rough stone thing. Uh, this rough stone has some price. But after cutting, it will double or triple. So we can add the value to this gemstone. Gemstone value adding is after cutting. So cutter and Cutter should be well known. If he cuts wrong proportional, not proportional cut, wrong cut, this is difference. The luster and the beauty of the stone is difference. So, should be cut very well. The light that enters the stone is refracted here and in it and reflected on the other side. And when it comes back from the face of the stone, the color inside the stone comes with it. Therefore, the color can be increased from the cut stone. So this is the difference between rough stone and the faceted stone. Look at here, here also. This is the cutting method. When the light rays enter from the table of the stone, this is a faceted stone. Pavilion reflects here and then other side reflects through the through the table. So this is perfect cut gemstone. Luster is 100%. If this is the stone, it must be the top part. That means crown part. Top piece crown. Top piece crown, bottom is pavilion. Crown part must be one third of the full height. Pavilion is two third of the full height. If the gemstone is the height is one, uh, out of that one, one third is the crown size. Pavilion size is two third. So then the maximum brightness will come. In between the crown and the pavilion, there is a line like this that is called girdle. Girdle must be 1% of the stone height. It is very, very thin. Girdle must be 1% of the height. The maximum brightness that comes with the color of the stone is seen above the stone. It is like this. This is the last coming through this stone. Now remember these uh, proportions. Look at this picture. The 
Pleochrism is the main thing we have to think about when cutting stones. These stones are all are sapphires, twin crystals also there, all are crystal shape. The bottom, there are all sapphires, but cut and polished, faceted sapphires. When we are faceting through the gemstone, rough gemstone, the main thing is we have to think the pre-apprism we learn in lesson one. In this corundum family, pre-apprism is in this side. This is the side mentioned. Pre-apprism is here. When we watch from this side, this is C axis, Z axis, this is X axis, or 90 degrees here, it is nine, uh, Y axis. Now, when we see this side, it is less color. In this corundum, it is less color. This side is the pleochroism. We can see more color than that. This side, that is pleochroism. When we are cutting the gemstones, the gemstone table should be, face should be in this side, not this side. So very, uh, very known thing is, Everybody cut stones through the pleochroism side. We have to think about the table to that side. Then we can get the more colorful stone. Look at here. This is the pleochroism side. Z axis or Z axis. If we cut the stone of a given table to this side or given table to that side, then the color is very, very weak. The price also very, very low, especially buyers don't buy because buyers know well pleochroism and everything. So if it is big one, we can cut from here into two and this one we can create from this one, taking the table to this side or the other side, one stone, full brilliance and the full color colored stone and another one from here then we can take two stones both are same color if we cut this side the color is dull dull color if we cut the stone to give in the table for this side the same thing happen so bottom and the top of the stone here color and the luster of the stone is maximum when we took it the table to the pleochroism side, C axis. Then we can see very nice this kind of stone. Look at the here, this one. This is the crystal. In some cases, we can't see the crystal shapes because so many years it is rolling out, then all the shapes will be vanished. But it is it shows the site, pleochroism site, then we can understand the pleochroism site, C axis. Then we have to take the table to that. If we cut from this way, this side, if we get the table to this side, the stone is less color and less price. If we took the stone, stone's table to this side, the pleochroism side, then it is given the big last and the color. If taken the uh, face in this direction, the color will be more and the price will be much higher due to the best luster. Remember, don't take the table to this side. This is the side we have to take. Look at here also. It is pink, lavender, purple. And this is the C axis. This is the side we can see the pleochroism. And this side we can't, it is low color, 90 degrees the difference between this angle. Then the direction in which the color of the stone lies is pleochroism. The black color shows the black color, arrow shows the pleochroism. When cutting the stone, the face of the stone should be taken in this direction. Then a small stone is cut, but higher in color. The price is also high. If we took the direction for this blue color line side, this side or that side, 
you can get a big stone, but it is less color. The price also very low. So ask for the stone after determining the size of the stone according to the side of be side to be cut. Otherwise, there will be losses. Remember this when we are doing when you are doing gem business. And look at here. This stone, we can see directly the C axis. So without looking, we can see the chloroquorosum must be this side. Then the direction in which the color of the stone lies, that means pleochorosum is here. Blue arrow shows us. Generally, the pleochorosum lies in the direction of the crystal axis of the stone. Already we know now. The pleochorosum is located. The pleochorosum is located in the direction of the crystal axis of the stone, that is C axis. Now I think uh, you can understand very well the pleochorism and the cutting both together. We have to think about very carefully. We have to think about those to get the maximum value and the color and the price of the stone. Join us and learn and enrich your future. We will meet in the next part, lesson eight. Please subscribe and share this to your friends.